Hello everyone, I hope all is well. I want to say thanks for joining me on this journey again. And last time I talked about AI surveillance. And this time I'm going to talk about recursive self-improvement. It's an issue that you must consider. Stick around because this concept is really thought-provoking and borders an area that I did not want to go into. But I think it's important because if I talk about artificial intelligence, you must know what's on the horizon. So let's get into the conversation. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I want to take you on a journey into one of the most fascinating and thought-provoking concept as it relates to artificial intelligence. Yes, it is called recursive self-improvement. The idea is that an intelligence system can improve itself autonomously and in doing so, create a loop of continuous enhancement. Yes, the system enhancing itself. If we understand it, and we are prepared for it, this could lock unimaginable opportunities for us. But if we are careless, let me say that it could be catastrophic. Catastrophic indeed. So at this point, I want to point out what is recursive self-improvement. Let me break it down because it's important that you understand it. Recursive self-improvement, or RSI, starts with an intelligent system that can upgrade itself. Just imagine a system that can upgrade itself optimize the algorithm and improve on the hardware and develop an entire new way of thinking. You see what I'm getting at? After it has improved itself, it gets smarter and more capable. And now it can repeat the process even at a higher level. That's where we are. In theory, AI could lead from a human level intelligence to super intelligence. And the entire system would, of course, feel like we're just somewhere else. It's like quantum physics to someone who has no understanding of it. But it is all possible. But why should we care? And I've always spoken about ethics. It's important that we understand the need for care. You might be wondering, why does it matter to me or you or to the entire population? Now, let us look into the future. Imagine a system that's AI capable of redesigning itself, its hardware, Imagine it revolutionizing the very field of medicine, education, solving disease, and of course, some diseases that we think would not be curable. Climate change, once it identifies a solution, might just find another solution. Now consider implications regarding the economy. AI that can think and improve could automate not just the jobs, but the entire industry, creative strategies, and employing various variables to enhance the productivity. Of course, what we knew then, we would not know now because things are changing at such a rapid pace, I would say. This sounds incredible, does it? But AI now has a capacity of doing many things. There was a news report I listened to earlier this morning that said at one point, AI could determine a threat and release certain weapons. That's autonomous, right? But let me say that we have to think carefully about these concepts. We have to think about humanity. And of course, there are actually risks associated with RSI. Because with great power, and I've always said this, comes great responsibility. And if an AI can reproduce itself in record time and these algorithms can get better in weeks or in maybe days or minutes, we have to understand that there's an obvious danger as it relates to control. If AI becomes so advanced and we can't even understand the decision it makes, how are we going to navigate the world? If an AI becomes so advanced that we can't understand its decision making, we're in problems because it might not be acting on our best interest. An AI might be designed to optimize say, energy usage, but it might request certain efficiency based on human decline. See what I'm getting at? So there are possibilities there, and that is why we have to think about it. There are so many people battling about energy, and if an AI is to make a decision, it might not be in the human interest of some people in our society. Therefore, the lack of misuse is possible. What happens when bad actors decide, you know, we want to manipulate things? When individuals start to hold these technologies. Finally, there's a question about fairness. Will the benefits of this technology be shared equitably? Or will it be concentrated in a set of power within our society? We have seen where technology companies are in control of so much of the technology. And of course, 
we, the consumers, are left at, of course, risk, as always. The issue for me is how do we prepare? I'm not here to alarm you about what is coming or what is already here, but I want you to prepare and understand that the road ahead is going to be one that requires management. We need to start preparing for what's coming. First, we need to understand that there needs to be an alignment with humans and, of course, these systems that are coming into place. We need to make sure that AI stays in sync with human values. And I've spoken so many times about ethical need in our society. This is a, one of the most important aspects of research today that we should be looking at, ensuring that we are protected. It's not an alarm. But we must address these things to ensure that our very survival and the generation of the future, they're protected. Second, just as we had global cooperation as it relates to nuclear technology in the 1950s, we need to have the same framework as it relates to artificial intelligence. This isn't about a single country having this technology or organizing itself to solve the crisis that is ahead. We need to work collaboratively. We need to work as global partners in solving this. Third, we need to democratize AI. The benefits of recursive self-improvement must be accessible to everyone and not just some. And doing so, we can approach this wisely. Let me say that recursive self-improvement could fit within the human aspect of developing our society and humanity. Notwithstanding, if it is not applied to everyone, in a meaningful way within a humanistic perspective, then it will deepen the digital divide as well as existing gaps that we have in our society. But it's a bigger picture that we must understand. We need to also zoom out. This isn't about just technology. It's about what it means to be human. Because we can have all these systems moving across and developing at such a rapid pace that we do not consider humans within the aspect if AI surpasses us as it relates to intelligence, we stand at a point that we have to ask ourselves, what role do we have in our society? And what makes us unique? And how do we define our purpose in the future? These are questions that we have to ask ourselves. Notwithstanding, if we are in control, we are in a better place to ensure that we maximize the use of AI, even when it reproduces at a quicker pace than we can imagine. But I believe that this can be done only through a story of collaboration, not competition. Imagine working alongside an AI system that can expand your knowledge and create things that you never thought about. So I want to leave a call for action because I think that's important. So as we navigate and as I wrap up at this point in time, let us not walk blindly into these technologies that are coming our way. But we need to harness the incredible power of these technologies, notwithstanding. And of course, have a vision, a vision that will help us unlock the future. But always remember, there are things that we don't even know yet. Because recursive self-improvement is not just an illusion. It's a reality. It's happening now. Thank you. And please like and subscribe to this channel.